കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് റിയാലിറ്റി ബുക്ക് ബൈ മോസ്റ്റ് ഫ്രണ്ടബിൾ കട്ടപ്പുറിന്റെ ഞാനാണ് തേരോ ഐ തിങ്ക് സവൺ ഈസ് റെഡി ടു റീഡ് ദ ബുക്ക് പ്രൊബബ്ലി വി ക്യാൻ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വേ ആർ വി ഹാവ് സ്റ്റോപ്ഡ് സമർ യാബന്തെ ഹോപ്പ് യു കാൻ ഹിയർ മീ വെൽ ആം യെസ് വി കാൻ ഹിയർ ഓക്കേ യെസ് യെസ് യാ ഓൾ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ഫ്രോം ദി ലെറ്റ് മീ ഷെയർ മൈ സ്ക്രീൻ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഓക്കേ യാ ഓക്കേ uh can you see my screen now yes yes okay uh so we stopped here so we'll start with the uh, path to non proliferation um yeah yeah path to non proliferation thus the inveterate tendency towards proliferation of concepts manifesting itself through craving conceit and weaves panha mana titi is said to estrange the monk from nibbana and the aim of the spiritual endeavors is said to lie in the direction of non proliferation the path to this state of nippa pancha is set out in the sakkapan sakkapanya sutta of dikha nikaya in this sutta sakka the interlocutor inquires of the buddha why all great classes of beings such as gods men asuras nagas and gandabas live in enmity hating hostile and malign in spite of the fact that they wish to live without enmity or hatred through a casual connected series of mental states buddha ultimately traces the origin of this origin of this unpleasant situation to the question of papancha sanya sankha those men those mental states cited in this due order would read out as follows isamacharya piyapya chanda vitakka papanya sanya sanka envy and selfishness things dear and not dear desire ratiocination concepts tinged with the prolific tendency the casual connection between vitakka and papanya sanya sanka might at first sight appear intriguing acquaint acquaintance with the madhupendika formula of sense perception vitakka towards papancha might make one wonder whether we have here a reversal of the correct order vitakka papanya sanya sanka but the contradiction is more apparent than real the assertion of the sakkapanya sutta that vitakka originates from papanya sanya sankha only means that in the case of the wordlings the word or concept grasped as the object for rati- ratiocination is itself a product of papancha this in its turn breeds more of it more of its kind when one proceeds to indulge in conceptual proliferation papancha concepts characterized by the proliferating tendency papanya sanya sanka constitute the raw material for the process and the end product is much the same in kind though with this difference that it has greater potency potency to obsess be wilder and overwhelm the wordling thus there is a curious reciprocity between vitakka and papanya sanya sanka a kind of vicious circle as it were given papanya sanya sanka there comes to be vitakka and given vitakka there arise more papanya sanya sanka resulting in the subjection to the same owing to this reciprocity the path leading to the cessation of papanya sanya sanka as Propo, 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 propounded in the Sakkapanya Sutta consists of a mode of training aimed at the progressive elimination of Vitakka and Vichara. Katam Patipanyo Panamarisa Bhikkhu Papanya Sanya Sanka Nirodha Sarupagamini Patipadam Patipanyo Hoti Yeah, one moment, uh, Saman. So, we'll, before we go to the Uh, section uh, let us uh, <clears throat> have a little idea about what now we are going to do so so far actually we discussed 
about various aspects about prapancha how they generated and what are the possibilities and uh, what are the different states of prapancha what are the different sources of prapancha and all that we have discussed in many different ways using various uh, sources various suttas but now only we are starting to uh, understand to overcome prapancha that means how to overcome prapancha avoid prapancha is something that uh, now only we are going to uh, recognize going to discuss so that is what uh, currently we are going to do and uh, so here nanada um, thero starts with one interesting sutta called sakka panja sutta now sakka panja sutta is available in the diga nikaya and we are the god sakka coming and asking various questions and uh, very interesting question he asked here is that uh, various say so called intelligent people intelligent beings they all want to have a peaceful life they all they all want to live peacefully harmoniously but unfortunately it doesn't happen they start become envious having atrocities having various conflicts arguments among each other so why this happen so this is a very common and very interesting question and which is quite valid today now we know that if we simply consider this whole world now through the communication we can understand okay different uh, ethnic groups are there different countries are there different nation, nations nationalities are there so they all want to live peacefully so that is why they are conducting peace summits united nations and various other peace conferences so that is what uh, they are trying to develop they want to live peacefully among each other without having any conflicts without having any wars battles but unpo- unfortunately there are many battles there are many conflicts there are many arguments maybe among the countries maybe about the nations maybe about different villages different cities or maybe even within the family there are conflicts there are certain quarrels actually what's the reason so this is the exact prash- problem uh, asked by uh, sakka and buddha actually giving a very interesting answer starting with papancha sanya sankha so we we we'll analyze what papancha sanya sankha is so papancha sanya sankha causing various different kinds of thoughts vitakka that causes to generate some amount of tanha we can say kind of a chand kind of a desire and that desire promotes some amount of okay this is good this is bad uh, this is what i need without him i can't live without her i can't live i need him i need her i need this uh, bank account i need this uh, say vehicle i need this resource i need this i need that so we start getting a kind of a idea okay, all that uh, interesting things are necessary and they become uh, essential and now we have what we call prp and good things are there bad things are there pleasant things are there unpleasant things are there and now we want to have them what is pleasant and we want to get rid of what is unpleasant and now we have what we call issa and machari issa means the enmity jealousy machari means kind of miserliness so when we have something we don't want to share it with others we simply want to own it we simply want to possess it as much as possible we don't want to share with others because it is something difficult uh, with a lot of trouble that i have acquired that i have possessed it with a lot of trouble so i don't want to share that with someone else i simply want to consume i simply want to sh- uh use it by myself so then the machari going to happen my sadness going to happen on the other hand if i couldn't have it then i am having some sort of an enmity with the other other people who have that who was capable of having that which i couldn't then i am envious of the other people who who basically enjoys that uh, whatever i like i want something but i couldn't get it but someone else is using it so i am envious about it 
I am unhappy about it. I am jealous about it. So we can see all the conflicts with the uh, psychologically take it to this level. So Issa and Macharya prepares some kind of a battleground. <clears throat> now I have enmity towards someone else's resources, so I can go and attack him in order to take that. On the other hand, if I have something, I don't want to share it. I want to protect it. I want to use it only for my own advantage, for own my own my pleasure. I don't want to share it with someone else. If someone start coming towards that, someone wants to have that, then I am going to argue. I am going to battle. I am going to conflict. I am going to have a kind of a war with the other party. So this is how basically uh, everything has developed. Now here, Katukurundu uh, Tero, interesting to point out. So how Papancha uh, Sanya Sankha generates with Akka. Now if we can remember Madhupindika Sutta, they are the uh, formula is different actually. Vitakka causes Papancha. Chakkuncha Padicha Rupecha Upajiti Chakku Vinyadan Tinnan Sangati Passo Passa Pachya Vedana Yang Vedeti Thang Sanjanati Yang Sanjanati Thang Vitakke Yang Vitakke Thang Papancha So that means uh, first we get the Vitakka so first we get series of thoughts and that is what ultimately going to develop to the level of conceptual proliferation. But now here point is Papancha Sanya Sankha causes to generate Vitakka, generate various kinds of thoughts. So how this uh, contradiction going to be sorted out? So the point is now assume that we have something. Suppose that we have a car. So this car is a product of Papancha. So someone has designed that, someone has uh, sort of thought about it, someone has designed, someone basically, probably they, he or she may be used various uh, software to develop it. They recognize various models, different, little, different components they have kind of designed. They have, uh, have a kind of a 3D model, 2D model, and from different angles, they have visualized it. And then they have thought about it. They want to apply a particular shape. They want to apply a particular metal. They want to apply various kinds of colors, different designs. And they may have various series of uh, meetings in order to design their whatever the product. Now, after going through all that, then they are coming to the manufacturing process. So after going through the manufacturing process also, now they are coming up with the end product. Now, this end product is marketed by the marketing group. And then only uh, we get to know, okay, there is a so-called so product available. It is available at this particular place. Okay, I want to see it. I want to check it. Now I am going there. So while I am there, so all these marketing people are there. They are pouring all their ideas. They are pouring all their appreciations, exaggerations onto my mind. And I myself see the product and it is capable of producing a lot of thoughts in my mind because the product itself is a, a product of uh, conceptual proliferation, product of a lot of thinking, product of many meetings, product of a human uh, intervention and their creativity. So that is the product. So that product generates certain amount of thoughts in my mind. It is capable of generating many thoughts in my mind. So all what we have, different kinds of manufactured products are like that. Even if we see a, a bar of soap, so that is also having some kind of a potential to generate some thoughts. Maybe its wrapper is very beautiful, its uh, uh, fragrance is very beautiful, very pleasant, and its shape is very beautiful. The cover may be very beautiful. The cover has sort of information. Cover has a beautiful image. So when we see that, so that this, even though it's a simple soap bar, it is capable of generating a lot of thoughts. Probably we might have even saw an advertisement with respect to that product. So that also come into the picture without much of our attention that that uh, influence coming from that uh, advertisement also operative in our mind. So ultimately our minds are completely conditioned by these advertisements, by our likes and dislikes. So 
what others have put into this particular product. So all that uh, come into the picture, all that are effective, then only I am starting thinking. So after seeing, after touching, smelling, tasting, so then I start thinking. So the thinking is possible because this Papancha Sanya Sankha. So Papancha Sanya Sankha here basically means uh, kind of a concepts. So we generate concepts by a lot of thinking. So concepts are the ones that uh, promotes thinking and we need concepts to think. That's a kind of a uh, interrelationship which is available between the thinking and papancha and papancha sanya sankha and thinking. Papancha and papancha sanya sankha has a slight difference. Papancha is the kind of dynamic process which is the conceptual proliferation available in the mind. That means the conceptualizing is going on. We are into too much thinking. We are into overthinking. So that is the conceptual proliferation, that particular process. On the other hand, the static nature of the papancha is that the, the product, whatever the beautiful thing, whatever the beautiful sight, whatever the beautiful object, whatever the beautiful song, whatever the beautiful smell, taste, tangible, what is available, are actually the products of human thinking, human creativity. So that promotes further thinking. That promotes a lot of uh, conceptualization in our minds. So, so this is the kind of a vicious cycle we are going through. In one sense, we start thinking and thinking leads to a dynamic process of too much thinking, overthinking and ultimately conceptual proliferation. On the other hand, even if we are able to maintain a silent mind, but it can be disturbed by a very beautiful product, which is uh, tempting us to think, which tempts us to think, which promotes thinking, which triggers thinking. So that is the area that uh, we are going to discuss now. Probably, someone we can a little bit uh, go further. Yeah, Bante. Katam Patipano Panamarisa Biku Papanya Sanya Sanka Niroda Sarupa Gamini Patipadam Patipano Hoti Somana Sampaham Devana Minda Duvidena Duvidena Vadami Sevita Bumpi Avisevita Bumpi T. Domana Sampaham, it goes on, Upe Kampaham, Avisevita Bumpi T. Somana Sampaham Duvidena Avisevita Bumpi T. Itiko Panetam Buttam Kinchetam Patichabuttam Tatayan Tatayan Jennas Tatayan Jenna Somanasam Imanko me Somanasam Sevato Akusala Dhamma Abivadanti Kusala Dhamma Parihayanti Evarupan Somanasam Na Sevitabam Tatayam channa somanasam imam sevato akusala dhamma pariyayanti kusala dhamma abhivadanti evarupam somanasam sevitabham. Tatayanche savitakkam savicharam yanche avitakkam avicharam ye avitakke avichare se panitatare. Domana sampaham duvidena ye avitake avichare se panita tare. Upe kampaham duvidena ye avitake avichare se panita tare. Evam patipano ko deva nam mindabiku papancha sanya sanka niroda sarupagamini patipadam patipano o titi. But how, sir? Has that bhikkhu gone about? Who has reached the path suitable for and leading to the cessation of concepts tinged with the proliferating tendency? Happiness, ruler of gods, I declare to be twofold, according as it is to be followed after or avoided. Unhappiness, too, I declare to be twofold. Equanimity, too, I declare to be twofold. And the distinction I have affirmed in happiness was drawn on these grounds. 
when in following after happiness one perceives that bad qualities develop and good qualities are diminished that kind of happiness should be avoided and when following after happiness one perceives that bad qualities are diminished and good qualities develop then such happiness should be followed now of such happiness as is accompanied by ratios ratiocination and of such as is not so accompanied the latter is the more excellent again ruler of gods when i declare unhappiness to be twofold the latter is the more excellent again ruler of gods when i declare equanimity to be twofold the latter is the more excellent and it is it is in this way that that a bhikkhu or ruler of gods must have gone about who has reached the path suitable for and leading to the cessation of concepts tinged with the proliferating tendency it is significant that although applied and sustained thoughts vitakka vichara conducive to wholesome mental states are utilized to eliminate those conducive to unwholesome mental states much in the same way as a carpenter would drive out a blunt peg with a sharper one they have merely a relative value they themselves should finally leave the sense making way for panya wisdom which is immediate and intuitive hence the recurrent maxim in the above passage underlined a detailed exposition of the process of gradual elimination of concepts occurs in the pottapada sutta of the ganikaya there okay, one point think... one, one moment i think before going to pottapada sutta we will discuss uh, further about the uh, sakkapanya sutta <clears throat> now here actually uh, buddha Uh, discuss with uh, based on the feelings so there are three types of feelings that as we all know the happy feelings unhappy feelings and the uh, equanimous feelings now the papancha sanya sankha pahana patipada that uh, explains with giving prominence to these feelings in this uh, particular sutta now different feelings are there so buddha is coming up with a solution giving some emphasis on to the feelings now what are we going to do here is that buddha say okay there are pleasurable feelings some are to be good to associate some are not to not not good to associate and some uh, painful feelings are there unpleasant feelings are there some are productive some are good to associate and some are not good to associate and there are certain equanimous feelings some of them are better to associate and some are not suitable to associate now how are we going to decide which is good which is bad so that is based on the wholesomeness and the unwholesomeness going to happen in our mind say for example uh, you are uh, associating a particular person and you are enjoying that company you are enjoying that relationship and uh, you think it is pretty good and uh, suppose that uh, previously you start uh, you were a good meditator and you are spending fair amount of time in meditating and you your mind has fair amount of uh, cultivation and you are able to maintain certain amount of uh, calmness tranquility in your mind and fair amount of mindfulness so suppose that you were a character like that but now you started a relationship with someone and uh, you start associating and this relationship develops fair amount of happiness that's why you are continuing that but unfortunately suppose that you are losing your mindfulness you are losing your calmness of the mind mind become more and more uh, thinking overthinking proliferation and lot of lustful thoughts and that is how uh, mind is now going to happen now you can compare whether i am i going to continue this relationship whether i am i going to continue this association whether i am i going to continue this kind of uh, pleasurable feeling 
now pleasurable feeling even though it is producing a kind of a pleasant sensation a pleasurable feeling a happy feeling but the gross result is something uh, unfavorable so you were in a fairly uh, developed level in your spirituality but unfortunately this particular relationship has caused that spiritual quality is to diminish your mindfulness has reduced concentration has reduced you started thinking too much and uh, <clears throat> you are into too much uh, daydreaming fantasizing proliferation and on the other hand so that means our wholesome qualities have diminished but unwholesome qualities have increased so if you are too much uh, say concerned about your spiritual growth then this is a point that you need to decide am i going to continue this relationship or am i going to stop it am i going to continue this particular uh, fa- uh, pleasurable feeling or am i going to stop it on the other hand they are assume that uh, you are having a, a little hard time in your meditation so you are even though you are meditating suppose that uh, uh, time to time you are getting certain amount of concentration certain amount of mindfulness but the process is difficult you have to find some time and sometimes you fall asleep sometimes you go through a lot of painful uh, feelings sometimes may be back pain there may be certain uh, itchiness hardness and likewise so there are certain problems sometimes arise but it produce fair amount of mindfulness now you can recognize the mindfulness has developed that more of most of the time you are fully awake you are fully aware what's really going on and again mind also has certain amount of concentration even if you are studying even if you are reading a book you can maintain your attention for a long time in that particular book and sometimes you can penetrate the situation rather than the other people like more than the other people you can see some depth and you can skillfully maintain yourself and you are not going to arguments often and you have a fair amount of patience perseverance and you are maintaining that uh, non reactive kind of a possibility so likewise you can understand okay as a result of this meditation process i am developing certain amount of spiritual qualities so those are improving and some amount of unwholesome qualities are removing reducing previously i was a very short tempered person now i have developed that i have now changed myself previously i had lot of lustful thoughts but now it has reduced previously i was completely unmindful i forget many things absent minded but now i have changed myself i am maintaining fair amount of clarity of the mind tranquility of the mind so likewise you can understand the benefits of the process but the process itself is a bit difficult it is a dif- bit difficult because you while you are meditating there may be some painful feelings there may be certain disturbances mind get distracted sometime and certain thoughts are coming to the mind so likewise it's a kind of a difficult little yeah. painful process tire some process now are we going to continue this process or not are we going to associate this kind of painful feelings or not that depends on the benefits so as i explain now there are many useful benefits qualities that we are developing so we better continue the process even though the painful feelings that we are going through the trouble sometimes we go through hard time that sometimes we go through understood as some unpleasant feelings but still it generate lot of uh, all some spiritual qualities by thinking that i need to continue the practice and on the other hand there are equanimous uh, feelings suppose that you are developing walking meditation so it's a very simple activity very ordinary activity and uh, while during continuing that ordinary activity i sometimes uh, have some troubles and uh, some difficulties mind get distracted but still i am again and again developing that as a result of that the mindfulness has developed presence of the mind has developed clarity of the mind has developed patience of the mind has developed 
and the ability to look at the mind has developed calmness of myself is developed well being of the myself is developed so you can understand the benefits now when you assess this process even though the particular activity is fairly equanimous what it generates quality wise in the sense the feeling wise it is a kind of an equanimous feeling but there are many many interesting benefits useful benefits are there so what am i going to do am i going to stop meditation walking meditation or am i going to continue that so here we can understand okay we can continue because this is a equanimous feeling which is worth associating worth continuing because it generate lot of uh, wholesomeness in our my in my mind good qualities in my mind some spiritual qualities in my mind so it is worth continuing so this particular uh, equanimous feeling is worth continuing now there's another little, little not, very important area highlighted here by the buddha now among these uh, present feelings painful feelings or unpleasant feelings and equanimous feelings while we are as- associate in that there may be thoughts in the mind and there may be a situation the mind become completely thoughtless mind has maintained calmness tranquility there are no thoughts so mind is completely tranquil so buddha say okay that is the best so the even though mind is uh, associating particular happiness unhappiness so equanimity there are also there is a distinction whether there are thoughts in the mind or there are no thoughts in the mind so buddha recognizes so buddha basically recommends okay when the mind is completely calm completely tranquil there are no thoughts at all so that is the best okay you go to go to that level so you can see when one has selected that path and one has established oneself in that path the complete papancha sanya sankha has eliminated that means even though you see my mind is calm even though you hear mind is calm even though you smell mind is calm even though you taste mind is calm even though you go through some tangibles still mind is calm even though time to time certain mental objects thoughts appear in the mind still mind is calm so the clarity of mind is intact calmness of the, of the mind tranquility of the mind remains steady even though you go through various sense impingements various kinds of sense objects forms sounds smells tastes tangible thoughts even though they are there so you are capable of maintaining your clarity of the mind so that means the proliferation has fairly stopped and you are able to uh, calm down the mind develop the mind you have now have a clarity of the mind and the mouth now the mind is completely free from any kind of a proliferation now you can see the with, based on the sakkapanya sutta based on the feelings so buddha particularly mentioned okay this is a strategy in order to overcome these uh, concepts which promotes thinking okay with that i like to conclude the today's discussion now discussion in the sense the book discussion reading and now i like to uh, uh open the session for questions namaste bhante today yeah. we have six questions uh, first one is uh, dhamma question uh, dhamma sermon question dear bhante i try to be vigilant on my thoughts when i can establish mindfulness after body awareness after your sermons on concept and reality i try to identify prapancha conceptual proliferations against just mere thoughts seems sometimes the boundary between these two categories are not clear can you please explain practically how one can differentiate prapancha from just thoughts much merits for this program and your service with metta that is the end of the questions yeah so it's a good question so basically uh, when i know there are thoughts in my mind so we can't say it is a papancha on the other hand when i don't know but i am completely driven by thoughts completely lost in thinking that means i am completely in papancha so that means i can't know that 
I am simply being a victim of the whole process. I have become a slave of thinking. I can't stop thinking. And that is the situation where I am in Papancha. So at the Papancha level, so I am I am become help, helpless and I have no control at all. So mind keep on thinking. I can't stop it. So that's the distinction. Yeah. Uh, second question out of six. Uh, dear Venerable Sir, is Sakkaya Ditti and Managata linked to each other but different phenomena or the same thing with Metta? That is the end of the question. Uh, I think uh, they are quite different uh, because Sakkaya Ditti is where you uh, hold something, grasp something and generate a personality uh, it doesn't necessarily mean some kind of a comparison. But comparison actually can promote Sakkaiditi. Say you prepare a self, you prepare yourself to being a good person and you compare yourself with another person and you understand, okay, I am better than him. So now you have the comparison, now you have the conceit, managata, and it even can promote thinking. And therefore, it can actually promote uh, Sakkaiditi as well. Assume that there may be a situation that the Sakkaiditi has completely abandoned. Now you are not uh, considering the body as a person, feelings as a person, perceptions as a person, Sankhara, the formations as a person, or the consciousness as a person. Sakkaiditi is abandoned. <clears throat> but still the comparison can go Managata can happen. Still, you might have the uh, quality in the mind, okay, I am still living, I am still having the sense of I, and I am still comparing myself with others. I am better than them. I am not good enough. So likewise, I am comparing myself. Even though I have given up Sakkaditi, still the comparison is there, conceit is there. So the practice has to be continued in order to overcome that conceit. So therefore, uh, Sakkaya Ditti and Asmi Mana are two different things. Okay. Third questions out of six. Uh, dear Bhante, what is the meaning of Manasikara and how does it relate to Prapancha with Metta? That is the end of the question. Yeah, you are paying attention. So Manasikara uh, typically means that you are paying attention to a particular you are interested object. So once you pay attention, only there is an uh, interest develop in your mind. Now you want to further deal with it, further want to look, it, look at it, uh, further want to think about it. Now it promotes thinking. So actually the thinking proliferation can't happen if you don't have any kind of a manasikara. So manasikara become a prerequisite for you to think about something. Now say for example... Uh, while you are sitting on the seat, you can look at far away. And there may be a person next to you, but you are not uh, much bothered about him because your attention is on something far away. So you don't have any thoughts pertaining to the person who is sitting next to you because your attention is far away. But now, suppose that you change your attention and uh, change your attention completely to the, to the person who is sitting next to you. Now there can be thoughts. Now there can be even uh, doubts about him or uh, interest about him, uh, maybe grudge about him or whatever it is. So the thoughts can generate because now your attention was drawn to that particular person. So attention is a must. Manasikara is a must for us to have thinking. And then it can lead to proliferation as well. The fourth question out of six, that is a general question. Dear Bhante, thank you for explaining the finer points of meditation to me. Is there a specific sutta in which Gautama Buddha advised us to sustain mindfulness throughout all activity while awake? And not just at times we undertake meditation practice by sitting, walking, standing, etc. Has this type of extended meditation 
got to be undertaken only after one is skilled in mindfulness of city meditation, etc. in a conventional fashion. Teruan Saranai, that is the end of the question. Uh, actually, in the Satipatthana Sutta itself, Buddha promotes uh, daily activities and be mindful on each and every subtle activity. So it is not uh, that you have to try that uh, only after you become uh, fairly acquainted with something. Rather, you can try being mindful of daily activities from the beginning. And there may be certain daily activities you are already being mindful. Say, for example, you are driving. If you are driving, probably you may be already mindful. So the matter of recognizing that mindfulness, which is available already with you when you are driving. So it's a matter of now using that sort of a mindfulness even while walking, while eating, while wearing clothes, while having a bath. So likewise, so daily activities are included. You can refer Sadipatthana Sutta Sampajanya Pub available in the Kayanupasana section where Buddha promotes all that uh, daily activities, including very subtle activities. Even he hasn't forgotten the Uchara Passava Kami Sampajana Kari Hoti. That means even while defecating, urinating, Buddha say, okay, you got to be mindful. That includes everything, basically. So all the different activities that we may daily get involved with, they are Buddha encourage us to be mindful. So therefore, it is not something that you need to put it to a very far away. Rather, you can start from the very beginning. Yeah. Fifth question out of uh, six. Uh, it is a general question. Dear Bhante, is there another meaning for anicca, which means uncertain, rather than impermanent, as currently described in English translations? In Singhala, doesn't uh, nischita mean def- uh, definite or certain? Teruan Sarmai, that is the end of the question. Yeah, uh, the uh, anicca, the term is, the meaning is the impermanence, uncertainty. Uh, we can say transience, changing nature. Uh, and the nishchita means actually you are certain about something. You are sure about something. Uh, you can give a guarantee about something. So that is the singular term nishchita. Uh, that you are assuring something. But because of the quality of impermanence, actually you can't give an assurance because things can change at any given moment. Uh, So therefore we can say uh, this impermanence, transience, which is inherent to all the conditioned phenomena, are uh, kind of changing all our plans, all our schedules, all our, say, dreams, thoughts, because they are going through some inevitable changes and which is also beyond our control so that is actually the anatta quality so things are beyond our control but unfortunately things are changing it could be to our own favorable happiness or sometimes to our unfavorable unhappiness so therefore different terms are there anicca basically means impermanence transience changing nature we can say the last question. It is a mindful sitting question. Uh, dear Venerable Bhante, every time when I sit for meditation within five minutes, very quickly, some sort of fine sound start to appear. And if I pay attention, it will start to find and continuously I can hear. Sometimes when continuous concepts started to disturb me without going back to my main kamatahan, I pay attention to this sound. Sound is more helpful than my main kamatahan for me to settle back into my regular practice. What is your thoughts on my action? Mean uh, pay attention to this sound during meditation. Thanks for your valuable guidance. That is the end of the question. Yeah, if you feel that it is helpful for your mind to become tranquil, to calm down, to concentrate, to focus yourself, then it's a good uh, strategy because uh, Buddha even applied that. Say basically, for example, the ajjatvam va kaya kaya nupassi vihirati, the bahidda va kaya kaya nupassi vihirati. So internal and external both are included, both are valid. 
Now, if you see that there are certain objects which are not really connected to the body, but still they are outside the body, but by paying attention to them, your mind calms down, relax, uh, and uh, it's uh, become concentrated. Then that means uh, it's a good strategy for you to use because the mind has a tendency uh, to become quiet or become concentrated using that particular object. No harm. Later, actually, once it is fairly focused, you can pay attention to the bodily activities, internal activities, internal objects, so that you are fairly uh, connected with them as well. And basically, you can further develop insights. Uh, that was the last question. And uh, we have about uh, 15 minutes. Uh, Nirupa, I think we can yeah. stop. <laughs> Today I have a retreat at the Nisarnavane to cover, so I like to stop it here. Okay, hey, my uh, We come to the end of the program. I would first like to thank Bante for his valuable time. Also, we would like to pass our merits to everyone, both seen and unseen, who are enabling this program. And we pass our merits to the all participants for joining the program. With that, I would like to end the pro today's program. Teruan Saranay. Yeah, that one's a night.